intro in here. Um, welcome back. This is the second podcast ever of the Get Sports Strong podcast. Well, podcast under Get Sports Strong. Yesterday, um, we did the Mid American Conference podcast, the first one. So go ahead and check that out. That's going to be coming every week. That podcast is going to be just strictly for Mac Mac football. Um, for those of you who follow me, and I really do appreciate uh, the uh, the followers and uh, subscribers. I appreciate you all. Um, I'm not gonna lie; I am a relatively new uh, sports handicapper, but I've uh, you know been having some uh, success. So I'm welcome to um, you know just hear from all of you guys, and thank you so much for all your feedback. Uh, you can follow me at captain.com backslash bet sports strong with a B. Um, get sports strong with the G on Twitter. Also get sports strong dot com and a sports watch monitor dot um, dot com. You can uh, check out my picks on get sports strong. But today, want to do something a little bit different. Um, definitely sports focused. Uh, it's gonna be a little more sports news focused. Not gonna focus on the handicapping today. Although I uh, do see that the Baltimore Orioles beat the Blue Jays. I don't like that. Uh, I see the Tigers are up eight to five on the White Sox right now. I do like that. So, um, but that's all I'm going to say about the handicapping for now. Other than the fact that this Twins and Indians game is still in the air. But um, yeah, this um, situation that's really had me thinking a lot. When you really look into it, it my initial thought isn't exactly how I feel now. And um, it's the Colin Kaepernick situation, as you probably can imagine so many people have been talking about it you may you may feel tired of it maybe you haven't heard enough of it there's just been so much on both sides as far as um the one side i mean there's been it's all this hate and colin kaepernick is all kind of inwards and he's disrespectful and he and he hates white people and and all that and all that stuff and then um you know on the other end though well i'll, I'll get into my thoughts on this um because I do want to be, uh, you know, respectful for both sides. I mean, there have been a lot of people who've disagreed with it. That, uh, and I do definitely respect um, both sides of the opinion, whether you agree or disagree with it. More so, how you, uh, you know, how you, uh, I'd say, more so how you disagree. Um, you may see what side I'm on, and it may piss some people off, but that's fine. Um, I just want to uh, be respectful and give my honest opinion. I think sometimes we learn the most. When we're um, when we're uncomfortable, um, I had I saw a news story that brought some things to my attention that a, that a friend of mine had about a different stanza of the the national anthem being about uh, dead slaves uh, or slaves being killed, slaves who were over on the British side trying to fight for their freedom, and uh, there's a lot of things I never I never knew that, and um, it's really interesting. So it's had me thinking, but. Enough of me rambling. I know it's not the most entertaining when it's just one person. So, I'm going to get my good friend Ken on the line. We have not, me and Ken, honestly, have not talked about this at all. Have no idea what he's going to say. Um, so, I do kind of want to get his opinion on this. And if there's anyone out there who, you know, after hearing us talking, if you're on the other side of this or if you're on our side... Uh, definitely feel free to comment and uh, email me, um, you know, betsportsstrong at uh, gmail.com. You can also uh, follow Get Sports Strong on Facebook, send me a message, uh, send me a tweet, capped, I mean, all that stuff. I'm, I'm accessible and I'd like to uh, hear from all of you guys. So, without further ado, let me get my friend on the line. I hope he is available because... Um, like I said, this is not going to be rehearsed, so we will see what is uh, going on. I hope everybody out there is doing good with their uh, sports picks. I'm really excited about this uh, college football season. So let's see what's going on. All right, calling right now. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Okay, I got you on the figure. Go ahead and see if I can hear you clear. Right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, cool, cool. 
All right, man. So uh, basically, I just kind of wanted to. Me and you haven't got to talk about it. I know we've had a lot of uh, good discussions in the past about all types of different situations. And first of all, I probably should have asked: Have you been? Uh, have you been following this uh, Colin Kaepernick situation? Uh, to be honest with you, um, I have like a, a surface perspective, not to be just to be, you know, completely, you know, authentic. Um, I, I've been seeing, you know, different people's uh, perspective being thrown out on social media, but you know, I, I say in a sense, I, I still. I still haven't really um, taken all of the pieces and, and really been able to synthesize, uh, you know, a, a picture that's clear for me as far as the situation even in itself. But I do, um, I do have a, a, a foundational grasp, at least, on what the issues are um, surrounding this specific incident. So let me ask you this. When you first, just your initial reaction, I know you necessarily how you, you, you feel now, but the very first time, or I'm not sure if it was already deep and you know pretty deep involved when you heard it. But when you first heard that, uh, like Colin Kaepernick or a football player didn't um, stand for the national anthem, like kind of how how did you first hear the information and what was your initial reaction? Um, well, I saw it on uh, I saw it on uh, social media. I believe it was on Facebook. And um, so you know, as soon as I saw it on Facebook, you know, I, I went to go investigate. Um, on whether it was on ESPN.com or one of the uh, outlets um, that had it as a breaking story, and um, at least as far as I know, I, I've been I've been able to see everyone else's perspective, but everyone else is, has been looking at it I, I, from a uh, from a very narrow standpoint, and that's mainly due to the fact that um, this is the, the realm and the arena of sports, and I I know a lot of people are expressing that you know um, some. Issues, you know, especially even related to uh, to race, um, ethnicity, and culture, those things are completely, into, you know, uh, you know, those things are in another area and arena um, beyond sports. Uh, but I think that's really where you really get it confused, and by taking that perspective, it, it's very dangerous. Right, right. So you mean um, when you say it's very dangerous? Like exactly, what do you mean by that? You mean um, like this is like bigger or like yeah, just just kind of tell me what do you mean by that a little bit? Well, uh, um, I, I say uh, from a certain you know from a certain standpoint, whenever you separate culture um, from an extension and facet of culture, uh, you you pretty much suck the life out of it. And um, I mean, you could really look at it from a number of different layers. I mean, uh, historically, even then. If you want to look at at, at sports, um, sports in many ways has always been, I wouldn't say, uh, they've always been somewhat of, of, of a means um, to be able to, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, keep people appeased, but um, they, they've always served as a way, as um, uh, um, a place of comfort in a sense. Um, we, we're really, really about our sports um, in this culture. Um, and that's evident even in, in, in the reactions that we're getting from them. Um, but people really need to take into consideration that the reason that's why we stand here today and that there's a National Football League is because um, there is a history. There's a history related to all of that, also even in economically as well. Um, people that are in positions of power, um, whether it's team owners, uh, uh, whether it's, you know, everyone even in down, even in the professional athletics, it, it's system even in that's been set um, and there's been a people there's been people that have been in that specific position of power and they've always been in that position of power um, from a historical stance and even from a cultural stance so we really need to examine those things first um, the historical and cultural context that's really being put to the forefront because um, I think that's what really Kaepernick is really he really wants people to be able to see beyond just the sports and the lights and the glamour he wants people to be able to understand that there's there's something much greater and deeper in the fabric of America beyond just our football, our Big Macs, and our Budweiser. Right, right. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's I, I think I think Ka Kaepernick is really he's really touching on some very sensitive points um, and sensitive areas here in America. 
And, um, you know, it's more his message even, I guess, even in the, the message that's being, uh, I guess, pushed on him is, you know, how dare you, how dare you, you know, disturb our great American football. Right. And, uh <clears throat> And, 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 you know, especially something like this, you know, we, we live in a post, we live in a post-racial America. We have a black president, you know, and, you know, and you have the opportunity even then, you know, to, to you know, to earn this great income, being a professional athlete and, you know, you're successful and, uh, and all these other things, they just, they, they come to the surface whenever you bring up the, the, the very, very, very point in history, um, related to uh, race here in this country. And you, I mean, you can't dissect the culture from the history nor the extensions of the culture, whether that's any facet of arts, entertainment, all of that. Um, whether it's the purveyors of all of these various forms of arts, and even in these various forms of entertainment, they've always, they've always come from a, a specific place. Um, and the people that have, the people that have pushed the culture in many ways are, are the people that are always pressed. And um, uh, Kaepernick. You know, he's he's really setting the framework of, of, of people to really to understand that it's it's a, it's a bigger picture. Um, and um, also, even then, we yeah, you know, we can't separate the culture and the history, and and this is something that we need to focus on. Um, right. And mainly due to the fact that you know, America, uh, America it really isn't a, a self-reflective culture. Um, we're we're very much so. Um, we're, we're a culture that's driven on a self-aggrandizement, self-gratification, but we're not a very self-reflective culture. And by and by that, I mean um, one thing that you even see, especially even in major media outlets, is uh, especially as it relates to uh, uh, race, culture, and all, all a lot of these controversial topics. One of the main things that you see um, is, well, especially even in, from from the stance of victimization, well. Um, well, look, look, look at what you're doing, you know, uh, and all of these injustices that are happening. Well, look at the black on black crime rate. You know, you all are killing each other. Um, and in many ways, that's that's just an extension of, of uh, that's that's an extension of a deficient culture that is projecting its insecurities on other people. You right. would rather you, you want others to focus on themselves because you've never <clears throat> taken the time and opportunity to focus on yourself. And as a country, we've never taken the time to focus on the painful, painful history. Why? Because we're too entertained. <laughs> right. And I think that's and I think that's what Kaepernick is really to, at the base level. You know, Kaepernick's like, yo, this is beyond entertainment. We're too busy being entertained to be able to understand what's really important. You know, my my initial reaction on it, and I and I definitely hear what you're saying. I um. When he first did it, I guess to kind of backtrack a little bit, I know a lot of people out there, including myself, have been saying for a while that people are, um, you know, frustrated. I know uh, in front of the, at the beginning of the SVs, like Chris Paul, LeBron, uh, Carmelo, and Way, they, I mean, they kind of made, uh, you know, comments, and, and I see they were trying to, to take a stand. But at the end of the day, and it's no knock on them at all, I, I respect what they did. But it, but um, a lot of times, I think it's just one of those things where people don't know what to do. So we're voicing that we need to do something. But you know, as a country, nobody really has the answers what to do, or else you know we wouldn't see you know all the backlash and confusion, you know, on uh, on both sides if we did. So when Kaepernick first did it, first of all, I give him credit because I'm thinking. He hasn't been playing very well lately, and I know he's in a quarterback battle. So then I saw he, I, I saw that he did that, and he did that, and then I looked, and then he threw for like 13 yards in the game, and I'm like, oh man, like, well, I see he's taking a stand, but uh, probably not going to be the starting quarterback week one. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So, and I, and I'm also thinking like I understand he did it because he's frustrated, and I was thinking to myself like I don't know how effective, you know, not standing for the anthem is really going to be. Because I'm thinking, like, you know, the anthem is not going to change. Like, what are you really going to accomplish by not standing for the anthem? But he, I know he wanted to do something. He's trying to take a stand. And I really think it was brave for him because he's not – he's in a place where he's very 
ex, you know, expendable. I mean, he's not LeBron. He's not Tom Brady. I mean, if, if Tom Brady decided to not right. stand for the anthem, they'd probably think about changing the anthem. You, <laughs> you never know. But right, right. so, so that was a co- courageous move because he has he has a lot to to lose. But as I think, even including myself, I think that this has really been educational. And now that the more time goes by, I think that this actually um, might be a lot of people may be mad at this, but I think that this is a uh, gonna end up a lot more effective than I, than I thought because it's it's been getting so much attention and when Kaepernick when they did the, I, I don't know if you saw the interview when they when the media asked him because he didn't make a big announcement about it but the way social media age and the era we live in now people catch everything and they asked him about it and if you haven't heard it and I kind of wish I had it queued up, but I don't, so I'm not going to worry about it. But um, if you get a chance to listen to his um, his his questions about it or his answers to the questions, I thought that he handled himself really well. And I think a lot of people have been putting putting words in his mouth. Like uh, it's like this doesn't mean he even said so much. People are saying, "Well, you make 19 million dollars a year. How are you oppressed?" And he said something really interesting. He's he's like, "Well." He said he, there's been times where he feels, you know, he feels like he's faced injustices, but he said he doesn't feel oppressed, you know, right now. But he said a lot of people, a lot of black people, are oppressed, and uh, I, I probably should just play it. I don't want to misquote him, but he was basically saying that he has a platform and he has a voice to speak for the people that don't have a voice, and it, and it's it's interesting because when you have a platform, the, anybody who has a platform like him you know, who speaks out, it's it kind of like you were saying earlier. It's like, well, you made it, you're doing well. Do you feel oppressed? You know, or you just shut up and play football. It's like, you've made it, you're, you're, you're not oppressed. So why, why say anything? But it's like, at what level, if you're doing good, you speak out, you have a voice or quote unquote, doing good by society standards. Uh, you know, you're doing good. It's like, what are you complaining about? But then people who aren't doing good that are oppressed, they have no voice to say anything, and and if they do say anything, no, nobody cares, or they'll, you know, they'll blame it on them, uh, them being lazy. And with all the backlash that it's gotten, and and a lot of attention that it's gotten, it's really um, a lot of with a lot of with all the negativity. I kind of think uh, it's it's kind of um, showing why he did it. And one other thing I'll say is I um, uh, I'm really into history. And um, I guess a lot of people didn't know, so I shouldn't be embarrassed to know this. Like, I heard the whole story. You know, I was familiar with the whole story of the Nasha, of the Star Spangled Banner in school. You know, with the War of, the eight, of 1812. And, well, I should say the story that we get in school. But I didn't, I wasn't really aware about the the part about the... Uh, yeah, yeah, the stanza with the uh, with the slaves fighting, you know, on the British side for their, their slavery. And then I wasn't... Um, also was not uh you know was not uh aware of all the uh yeah all the history that that went behind it and then that you know from Francis Scott Key and his background and I and I hate and it's kind of just made me think about it in a different light where like you were saying it's and I don't want to get too ahead of myself I'll let you comment on here there's so many things I guess with this with this country that when you look back and uh a lot of it's a lot of it's embarrassing you know when when you when you when look at it and it can disgust you and i think there's a lot of backlash and frustration because this country overall instead of like embracing the history um and even and even people say you have to move forward it's like you know to know where you're going you have to know where you've been but right. when you talk about things that are you know reality and things that happen People kind of pick and choose, you know what they what they want to ignore, and um, I don't know. You got anything else to uh, say about that? <laughs> well, uh, man, I, I, you unpacked a lot, man. Uh, you know, my mind really started buzzing whenever you were, especially whenever you were talking about. Uh, well, I, this this is this this may not necessarily be the best example, at least you know stand right now, but um, Tom Brady and then Kaepernick, you know. The, um, the idea you have Tom Brady on one hand, who is the idealized face of the NFL, you know, 
Right. Um, and then, you know, you have Kaepernick. And also, even then, and this, this may be even something to consider, and it may be a layer and it may be not. Um, I think another thing to consider is, um, is Kaepernick, where, where Kaepernick fits um, on the side of ethnicity. So I believe that plays the dynamic, you know, as far as him being biracial. Um, that I, I think I think in many ways that that adds a level of sensitivity to what's really going on, and uh, mainly due to the fact that even in like uh, it's this is it's, it's an extension of it's, a, it's an extension of, of what's really happening here um, in our country. Um, you have you have a group of people who have been define themselves with a certain ideology who fit within a specific social class. And they're turning their head um, to these issues at hand. Um, and Kaepernick, and even I, I was able to actually, you know, hear the response that he had in the, you know, in the uh, locker room, you know, the locker room questions they were giving him. And uh, yeah, you know, he he has to, you know, he doesn't feel oppressed. But at the same time, even if him not feeling oppressed, there's a sense of there's a level of sensitivity that he has to this. And I, I think he's coming from. I think he's coming from a uh, from the perspective of uh, I know other people see this going on too. You know, I know I'm not the only person. You know, um, that that see these things happening, and, um, and even as far as it, you know, it, it being a statement, even in itself. So, like, whenever, I, like initially, when I first heard about it, I you know, you know, at least you know, the mind you know starts grabbing for you know uh, similar ideas. And, um, you know, I, I began to think about the Olympics, you know, um, you know, where you have the brothers who, you know, raise their fists. Um, in many ways, you know, what is raising your fist going to do? But, you know, that specific statement there stands in time. It, you know, it will forever echo in time as, you know, um, and I wouldn't say uh, not necessarily even as an act of defiance, but uh, a symbol of power. Um, even in the face of oppression, and uh, Kaepernick, in many ways, and, and this is—I think this is the most key and critical part. Um, everyone has a role to play um, in, the, in the greater picture, you know. And everyone's like, "Oh, well, what can I do? What can I do? Do what you're already doing. Live the life how you're already doing. You know, like you know, if if you're, you know, if you're a janitor, you know, then you know, then they continue to lead in excellence." But don't be afraid to make a statement and have conversation. Um, and I think him taking the statement is just, in many ways, it's just a conversation starter. Um, and just by starting conversation, uh, then, you know, you have the collision of different ideas. And when you have the collision of different ideas, then minds begin to change. Uh, so I, I'm really... I'm really interested even then to see how this is going to play out more so um, as it relates to image because I, um, uh, race and ethnicity plays a great uh, a great deal of uh, it, it, it's a great deal it's really weighted especially even in professional sport um, and from you know whether it's even in all, uh, every every professional sport you could think of you, could, you think of um, and um, maybe it's just me but especially even in um, you know, black males, even the more specifically when I talk about football, because of the style of style of play and it being an aggressive sport. Um, you know, in professional sports, whenever you're hearing about scandal and, and all of the different things going on um, with black players, um, it always seems to be compartmentalized um, and given a specific designation. It's, it's given a, a, a certain importance. It's it, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's the flavor in many ways. So you know, like, uh, so in, instead of instead of him being, you know, instead of him being a human being, he's a beast. I mean, and and then you know, how, how is it hard for us to separate him from being a beast off the field? Whenever you know he makes that great pass and he makes that great play, and everyone's in the stands talking about, "Ooh, he's such a beast." Right. Um, but let's get back to entertainment. You know, you want to talk about entertainment and professional sport. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of unsightly and uh, just uh, I can just 
So yeah, a lot of ugly things that have been done in the name of entertainment here in this country. Um, not even just in professional sports. But I mean, our association even is for entertainment. Um, menstrual shows. Um, do I dare even then bring up Birth of a Nation? Um, the film that is responsible uh, for the ideology of the black beast, um, the degenerate. Um, uh, all of these different things, you know, they, they usher in a specific kind of, of you know, ideology. Um, and this, all of this plays out, even in, in, it plays a very key key role in how we interpret, uh, you know, and how, and how we negotiate our culture and how we live our lives. Right. One thing, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll touch on too, especially, um, you know, for people who don't know, no, I mean, because I think it's relative to this. I mean, you touched on Kaepernick, uh, you know, being biracial and something I can, uh, you know, speak to with that. Because I've noticed a lot of people, um, and even if you don't, like, agree with what he did, uh, I know a lot of people, I think, have kind of been just, just jumping out off of, you know, the same arguments, a lot of the arguments with you know, people have died for this country, and, and, and this country's great, and why don't you go live somewhere else? And and people are frustrated. A lot of people are frustrated on that end. But with him being biracial and people, a lot of people have been kind of bringing up, like, well, you know, you were... you're this And this is what I heard. I know it sounds terrible, but I've heard a lot of arguments like, well, your black father knocked up your, you know, your white mother, and, <laughs> and then these two, you got adopted by a good white family that basically... uh saved you now now i'm thinking like for him i mean you know with him being uh having two white parents um he had one white parent but not not two but he he probably you know it also is, had brought him very aware of, of a, at a very early age because i know a lot of kids i can't speak for all kids i can speak for myself i'm not sure like on average like when a lot of kids really start to see race like a lot of kids will play with each other and get along and and they pick up on a lot of bad habits you know from adults on uh you know on all sides but with them being a, a biracial and with a um you know two white two white parents essentially he probably realized that at an early age it's like you know i'm, I'm not like everybody else <laughs> you know it's like well I have these white parents but I, but i'm not i'm not white you know you can't you can't you can't be white you know regardless of what uh you know, people. Uh, you know, w- no matter what you tr- what you try to do, there's going to be certain things that happen that um, that are going to let you know how people perceive you. And I think even in this, you know, this incident is showing how a lot of uh, people perceive him. So I think that he's probably also felt, uh, you know, conflicted with a lot of things that he's that he's experienced. He's probably even subconsciously he's probably you know experienced a different treatment. I mean, I realize even. When I was really young, I realized like right away, you know, even on both sides of the family, it's like I'm different than everybody else, you know, which is which is okay, but it's a different, um, you know, different. Uh, you get different, um, ex- you get different experiences, and um, I. Now let me ask you this though: Would you? Because for me, I had to ask myself this question, as far as the national anthem, because learning, hearing more of this stuff. I never really thought I would sit for the national anthem, but it, it's it's almost, and I can understand if I feel this way, there's got to be a lot of other people that if they are honest with the lyrics and the history of it would probably feel the same way. But I think a lot of people are getting defensive and upset because we don't really want to, we want to, we want to look at what he did and not the message behind it and what he, what he said. And I'm thinking like to myself, learning more about the national anthem, and this kind of makes me, uh, it's like would I would I sit for it? And for me, the reason I say this is, I'm at um, I'm at at least high school football game every single week. Um, I go to a lot of games, so I hear I'm standing for the national anthem a lot. I mean, I was just standing for the national anthem. I was just standing for the national anthem on Friday, and um, I respect what what, what Kaepernick did. Now I wouldn't um. I'll be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I'm not going to, I already know, I'm not going to sit during the national anthem, but it almost, it does make me a little uncomfortable, and and I think, I, I and I don't have a problem admitting that, uh, that I'm uncomfortable, because it's almost like, uh, 
what Chris Rock said before, he said sometimes like if if you're black in America, you know, America's like uh that uncle or that paid to put you through college but then kind of like molested you at the same at the same time. So when you look at that that history, I, I mean cuz I I think about uh you know what this, you know what I hope, you know the dream of what this country can be. And I'm still going to, you know, stand for the for the anthem, but it does uh I really do respect what Kaepernick did, and honestly, I, I'm glad that he did it, um, just to kind of get um, conversation going. There was another player, and I don't even know his name. It had flashed on ESPN. He decided not to do it. I guess he's been playing good in the preseason, but there's this um, undrafted, I, I wish I had his name. There's this undrafted um, rookie free agent who went to Incarnate Word, and I hear he's doing good in the preseason. He's gonna make. He should make the team. But I guess he had announced he was gonna sit for the, na- the anthem. I guess his teammates or his college coaches got it. Got in front. Got it. Got to him. And were like, "Oh man, uh, you probably don't need to do that." Because any he released a statement like that's not the best way for him to handle it. It's like, yeah, man, you you undrafted free agent. You probably need to stack a little bit of money first. <laughs> you're, you're gonna be back uh, with the, with pe- people who don't. Right, or pretty soon you won't you won't have a voice. So, uh, but it's um, but I really respect Kaepernick a lot for what what he said, and and I think everybody, if if you really, if you're honest with yourself, and you really look at it, and, and you're and you're honest with it, and you're just not getting you know pissed off, I think it'll make you uncomfortable. And and I've heard a lot of things. Um, I heard one guy, one guy who was really really upset about it, and he was talking about um you know 911 like if if Kaepernick doesn't uh stand on 911 you know he'll be so pissed off and um I understand where he's coming from but I think and everyone is not not going to think like this but I think with a lot of the uh the whitewashed history in this country it's 911 I I remember you know watching it live it was horrible you know it, I mean it was it was horrible there've been a lot of horrible things that happened but it, there's just like select things in this country that um you know that we talk about as horrible like 911 was horrible everybody everybody supports that everyone's like what about 911 you know let's you know let's honor the flag people that died you know in 911 nobody nobody's going to disagree that 911 was terrible but you know if you start um and I'm not going to get too deep into it people can google it if they want to um you know you start talk about like the Tulsa you know the Tulsa riots you know, 1921, right. where, you know, thousands of black people were, were killed. And it, it, then all of a sudden, you know, the conversations, and the com- and then 40 years And then 40 years later, not even 40 years later, they were bombed in Philadelphia. Right. And, you know, and then, I mean, the countless other times even then where uh, there have been uh, mass killings, um, all I gotta say is Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right, and it's it, and it's it's kind of like the country selects like selects the outrage, and it's like, and it's just a lot of police officers doing things with with no consequences. And then I know I'm sure a lot of people listening may think I hate uh, I don't know I may lose some some people. They may think I'm a you know like Kaepernick and I hate police. But I mean I've had a lot of conversations with my father and, and the people out there don't know. I mean my my father is a, a white police officer, so I definitely don't hate white people and don't hate police officers. Me and him have had a lot of conversations that we um that we've disagreed with uh, disagreed with things on, but it's never it's never a heated discussion. I, I understand he's seeing things from one perspective. I'm seeing things you know from a different perspective. And I think that there's some, you know, things that we can learn on both sides. But I, I just kind of told him, even when people talk about, you know, the whole like, uh, you know, black on black crime thing versus the police, it's like, well, if if somebody just the the difference I told him, one of the big differences is if somebody kills me on camera or black man kills another black man on camera. And everybody sees them do it. Everybody knows who did it. No one is automatically going to assume that the person who did the killing was innocent. And and the, and the, you know that person is going to go to jail who committed the, the crime. But with the, with the police officer, it's almost like, you know, and I, I told him, I said, there's good and bad people. 
in every in everything that you do. There's corrupt people, and and there's good people. There's a lot of great cops. There's bad cops. But the thing is, what the bad cops are able to get away with with the power that they have is is really dangerous. With no with no checks and balances. I mean, a cop can can plant something on you, kill so you. And as you see, I mean, everyone's automatically gonna take the other side. So. I don't know. It, it it's 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 it makes it and it's okay if people are uncomfortable, but I think on both sides, like whether I'm talking to um I'd like to be able to listen to someone who disagrees with Kaepernick and you know, whether I agree with Kaepernick, they disagree with Kaepernick. I just think um we should be able to like have conversations about this, you know, as civilized adults when people get get into the, you know, Kaepernick this and this and you know, in this and all this and and all those slurs, it's like, well, you're really just you're just proving his point because it's it's like, at the end of the day, I mean, it's the, it's the Star Spangled Banner, but it's like this man didn't stand up for the for the for a na- for the uh, Star Spangled Banner, a song that probably ninety nine point nine percent of Americans until yesterday had no idea the history behind. And still today, probably ninety eight point nine still don't know because they just they just don't want to or they don't want to process the information. So it's like instead, just kind of listen to what he's saying. And I, and I applaud Kaepernick because you no know, one thing I'll, I'll say, one thing I do want to say. A lot of people have been saying they don't they don't disagree. They don't disagree with what he did or trying to get his message across. But there's they don't like the way that he got his message across. And the thing is, I mean, with LeBron, D. Wade, Chris Paul, Carmelo did, you know, it, it, no one's really thinking about it too much. It didn't really have like a a big impact. And I'm not knocking what they did at all. But really, in order to get an impact, you have to make people uncomfortable. Um, you know, it's like we just celebrated Muhammad Ali, but I think this kind of kind of proves that. A lot of people really didn't like what um, you know what Ali stood for, but you got to make people uh, comfortable, you know, uncomfortable. Because if he didn't make people uncomfortable, nobody's nobody's talking about this. Nobody's talking about Colin Kaepernick, and everyone is saying he should have went about it a different way. But no one's able to say what other way should he went about it. Because I think that, um, and, and I think with Kaepernick, he probably got to a point he's frustrated, he's angry. And he's like, I, I don't know what else to do. Like, you know, I, I'm not playing well. Like, I mean, what else? Can, what can I? What can I even do to get the the point across? And I think, um, you know, being a very educated young man, I think Kaepernick probably knew that history of that national anthem before a lot of us did. And you know, what I what I think with the national anthem, and as far as standing in it, I think everyone should just be authentic, uh, authentic about it with, with how they feel. I'm like, you know, it makes me a little uncomfortable, but. You know, I'm mean, honestly, I, you know, and I may take some criticism for this. I'm still going to stand because I still feel as, you know, much as this, the, a lot of the history of the national anthem bothers me and I still agree with what Kaepernick did. I'm going to stand because to me that that feels like the right thing to do. If you in your heart don't feel like it's the right thing to do, then by no means, I think everybody, you know, it's one of the things that makes you know, America great. I think everyone should do what they feel is right. But I think we should be respectful and have more dialogue, you know, di- dialogue about it and, and a lot of things like this. But I will admit this whole situation, um, even with the, you know, with the national anthem and everything with the history, kind of when I heard all the details, it, it did kind of make me uncomfortable. It doesn't surprise me though, uh, because. Hold on one second. I mean, it doesn't really surprise me, though, because um, a lot of people hate this. I mean, I've been kind of reading the notes of the state of Virginia by Thomas Jefferson, and I don't want to get too far off sports, but, I mean, reading that, it's it's like, okay. I mean, <laughs> it's almost like, you know, anything, I guess, with the foundation, there's, especially for people of color, like, it's just... You guys have to admit, I mean, the, the, the basis, anything you're looking at that was written in the 1800s, 1700s, it just, it just, it just wasn't, it wasn't uh, set up for us. <laughs> I mean, that's just, it is what it is. I mean, anybody who, who, you know, disagrees, or I don't know what I'm talking about, I mean, just read Thomas Jefferson, Notes of the State of Virginia, you know, look at the history of the uh, National Anthem, look at Francis Scott Key with an open mind, 
And not saying that, you know, don't hate the country, you know, don't hate white people. I, I'm not saying any of that. Um, but it's, it's, um, it just, you know, it, it's just open dialogue to and just be honest. Right. If, if everybody wanted to be, would be honest with themselves, it's just, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of family secrets in America that, that are, that are being exposed, you know, right. it's almost, <laughs> it's almost like, you know, that the dinner, uh, you know, the dinner, uh, the dinner table scene in soul food, you know, like the secrets is coming out in the family, you know, and a lot of people right. just. <laughs> just un- yeah, uncomfortable so I don't know but I, I don't know if you got anything else to add uh, man, you, I, I think you, you pretty much summed it up you know uh, you know these you know these different instances that occur you know whether you know violent or non-violent um, you know they they expose a lot of the uh the, the hurt and the pain that's already there and I think until we really have those conversations until we're really uncomfortable um, we really won't uh, be in a position to really change anything or be in a position where we can really start doing the necessary healing uh, we have to admit that there is a problem first and uh, I think you know I think Cap understands that, that there is a problem and uh, football is not going to solve those problems and you know, as far as even his performance, you know, on you know, on the gridiron, uh, no matter how good he plays, you know, um, in many ways, you know, he's uh, he's still going to be in that black skin. He's still going to be in this country um, that feels a certain way towards black people. And you know, even if people are cheering his name, you know, that's going to be based on his performance on the field. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe in many ways it, it's a statement of value, you know. How am I truly valued in this country, you know? Am, am, I try, am I valued for who I am or am I valued for how well, you know, I can throw a ball or dribble a ball or, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, is, is my, uh, my livelihood, you know, contingent on uh, how comfortable I'm making you? And uh, I... I you know, I would say, you know, from my perspective, uh, um, blacks and other people of color have a history of, of going out of their way to make sure that the dominant culture is comfortable. Right. One last thing I'll say, uh, man. Uh, oh, go ahead. I don't know. I mean, uh, and it, it, it's apparent. It's apparent in our. Uh, it's apparent in our, our, our day-to-day talk and in our interactions, we're very uncomfortable with each other. And regardless of how we, we you know, we don't want to admit it, um, we're, we're very uncomfortable in this country and we're very polarized in this country. And whether that's, you know, on a Sunday, you know, Sunday morning, you know, whether, whether you know, when blacks go to their church and whites go to their churches or, you know, a, a number of, you know, other examples, uh, it's, it's, it's still a, a part of, the discomfort that's there and the things that we really need to address, the conversations uh, that we really need to have. And uh, no amount of football is going to solve that. Right. Man, one last thing. I saw um, I had to call people out, not that he's going to hear it anyway. Even if he did, I didn't care. Man, I, Rodney Harrison, though, his comments did uh, upset me, man. I'm not sure if you heard his comments. He's um He used to play in the NFL. He's, uh, he's black. He's... Uh, works on NBC for the Sunday night football. And he made a comment about like Kaepernick. Uh, he was like, well, Kaepernick, you know, he was like, he should have just wrote a check. He shouldn't have did this. He's not black. He's like, when I go into the store, Pete, Kaepernick doesn't know what it feels like for people to look at you when you got two, $3,000 in your pocket and you're still trying to steal something. And I'm, and I think it would Rodney Harris. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, he's not black. And then later he apologized and said he didn't know what ethnicity was. I mean, I can, I can tell. I mean, you, I can see someone looking at Kaepernick, not knowing what um, race he was, but saying that he's not black. And even if Kaepernick wasn't black, I mean, you imagine a, a, a white player just not standing up for the anthem because of the, like what black people are doing in the country. I mean, if if a white player wanted to do that, I mean, it's like I wouldn't. You know, if J.J. Watt wanted to do it, more power to him. I mean, there'd be a lot of be a lot of angry people in Texas. I can tell you. <laughs> 
you that. For sure. But um, all right, man. Well, I appreciate your uh, your comments. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get off here, and I'm gonna I'll give you a call in a little bit, okay? Hey, man. I appreciate uh, you having me on, man. Uh, I hope I, you know, I, I gave my two cents in some way, man. Oh, no, definitely, man. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right. All right. All right. So, um, that's uh, me and Ken's conversation. Uh, my father's an Army veteran. I, I need to talk to him, see how he feels. Um, my grandfather's an Air Force veteran. Um, you know, curious to see how he feels. So, um, got uncles who uh, fought in Vietnam. So, I got a lot of respect for, uh, you know, the military and everything, but, um, it's, it's really a situation, I just want everyone to, I don't know, regardless how you feel, uh, just, just be honest with it, uh, go out there and learn, because no matter what, we all have in our mind, you know, different truths, and things that we believe, but, but our truths and our reality change every day, and what my reality is, isn't necessarily your reality, and, um, what your reality is, isn't necessarily my reality, and then, you know, you got the world we live in. Certain things will happen. And um, I respect Kaepernick for what he did. Um, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to uh, kind of kind of talk about that. I, I really do appreciate everyone who tuned in. Um, if you have any comments, definitely leave comments. Um, you know, if you disagree with if you hated the show today, let me know. If you enjoyed the show, let me know. Um, I really would like to... Uh, to hear from 